Hello everyone, this is John Hashmet and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video I will be solving the paper 6 exam for May-June 2023 variant 1. So let's get started. Question 1 says a student investigates the balancing of a meter ruler. Figure 1.1 shows the setup. The student places the meter rule on the pivot at the 50.0 cm mark with the scale of the ruler facing upwards. He places an object Q with its center on the meter rule at the 90.0 cm mark. Calculate the distance y from the center of Q to the 100 cm end of the ruler. So we subtract 100 minus 90. That gives us 10.0 cm. Part B says the student places a load P of weight P equals 2.0 newtons on the meter ruler. He adjusts the position of the load so that the meter ruler is as near as possible to being balanced. He measures the distance x from the center of P to the zero end of the ruler. He repeats the procedure using uh, loads of weight 3, 4, 5, and 6 newtons, and the values of P and X are shown in table 1.1. Describe the main difficulty that a student has when doing this experiment as accurately as possible. We say that it is difficult to find the exact position where the ruler balances. So it actually never balances horizontally, so it is very difficult to find the exact position of balancing. We do that by averaging. In part C, we are required to plot a graph of P per Newton on the Y axis against X per centimeter on the X axis. As for the Y axis, we started with two Newtons, then three, four, five, six. So we have a scale of ones on the Y axis. For the X axis, the maximum number was 36.8 and the minimum number was 10.2 in the table. And we have five divisions on the x-axis so we subtract the maximum number minus minimum then we divide by the number of divisions that gives us 5.32 comparing this with 1, 2 and 5 the acceptable scales we find that none of them is greater than the answer so we multiply that by 10, 10, 20 or 50 and we choose the smallest one that is just larger than the answer so we have a scale of 10 and we can start from 10 we don't have to start from the origin so 10 20 30 40 50 on the x-axis now we plot the points the first point was at the 2 newtons and we have 10.2 so that is approximately at the 10 or just after the 10 the next point is 3 on the y-axis and 23.1 which is approximately 23 on the x-axis so this is the second point the next point is 4 on the y-axis and we have 30 exactly on the x-axis. Next one is 5 and 33.8, so 33.8 approximately 34 or just before 34. And the final point is at 6 and 36.8, which is approximately 37 or just before 37. So this is not looking like a straight line, so we draw a smooth curve as smooth as possible we do not need to include all the points just a best fit curve part d says use the graph to find the value of x required to balance the ruler when p is equal to 3.5 newtons show clearly on the graph how you determine the value of x so from 3.5 we go to the graph and we find the x coordinate for the point on my graph it is at the 27 centimeter mark it does not have to be the same for everyone since uh, not all people can draw the same exact graph so this would be different part e says using the practice from figure 1.1 explain briefly how you would determine the position of the center mass of the ruler we say that we can balance the ruler horizontally on the pivot without extra loads and the pivot will be at the center of mass so we can use the pivot as a pointer. Question 2 says a student investigates the cooling of water under different conditions. Figure 2.1 shows the setup. So we have a thermometer next to a beaker. The thermometer in figure 2.2 shows the room temperature theta r at the beginning of the experiment record theta r. So this is one division after the 20 mark. So this is 21 degrees Celsius. Part B says the student pours 200 centimeter cubed of hot water into the beaker. She records the temperature theta of hot water at time t equals zero. She immediately starts a stopwatch. She continues recording the temperature at 30 second intervals. 
the temperature readings are shown in table 2.1 complete the column heading so we have time in seconds and temperature in degrees Celsius and complete the first column of table 2.1 which is the time so starting from 0 and then adding 30 seconds every time so 30 60 90 120 150 and 180 Part C I says calculate the decrease in temperature delta theta between T equals 0 and T equals 180 so at 0 it was 92 and at 180 it was 67 so subtracting them we get 25 degrees Celsius double I says calculate the average rate of cooling R of the water using the equation R is equal to delta theta which was 25 over delta T where delta T is 180 so we divide 25 by 180 we get 0 0.13888 recurring so we can approximate that to 0 0.14 as two significant figures since 25 and 180 are two significant figures and the unit is degrees Celsius per second since we divided temperature by time for D says a student states that the average rate of cooling of the water decreases as the temperature comes nearer to the room temperature suggest one change to the experiment that you could make to test the statement so if the room temperature affects the experiment if we change the room temperature it could cause the calculation of the rate of cooling to change or not so we can say change the surrounding temperature using a water bath with different temperatures or we can use uh, an air conditioner to change the temperature of the room so we can test the theory of changing the room temperature does it affect or not the rate of cooling now suggest how to display results to make it easier to see the trend in the rate of cooling we can say that we can plot a graph of room temperature on x-axis against rate of cooling on y-axis so we can see the trend is it a straight line a curve a horizontal line which means there is no change or anything part E says explain briefly why it is good practice to read the thermometer scale at right angles we say to avoid a line of sight error or a parallax error then F says the student uses a measuring cylinder to measure 200 centimeter cubed of hot water she reads the scale at right angles suggest another precaution to obtain an accurate reading for the volume of the water we say we can look at the bottom of the meniscus since most of the liquid will be at the bottom of the meniscus question 3 says a student investigates the refraction of light using a semicircular transparent block figure 3.1 and figure 3.2 show his ray trace sheet now we have the block with the flat surface at AB and we have two pins P3 and P4 part A says on figure 3.1 draw the normal NL through the center of AB so first we need to find the center of AB we measure the distance from A to B this is approximately 4.4 so we place a mark at the 2.2 which is the center of AB and then we use a protractor to measure the 90 degrees to draw correct normal so we mark the angle now it says continue the normal so that it passes through the curved side of the block so we will draw a long line at 90 degrees to the block and extend it beyond the block now we label the line an L so for example N at the top and L at the bottom label the point C where the normal NL crosses AB so we just write the letter C at the intersection and part B I says draw a line DC below line PC at an angle of incidence 30 degrees to the normal and to the left of the normal so we need to draw it on this side so we use a protractor again and we place it at the center at point C and we measure 30 degrees from the bottom so this is a point here and we draw a line from C downwards toward the bottom and we label the end of this line D now double I says mark with need crosses the positions of two pins on line DC at suitable distance apart for this type of ray trace experiment and label these positions P1 and P2 so for crosses we have a distance at least five centimeters apart and we Part C says the student looks from the position of the eye shown in figure 3.1 to observe the images of P1 and P2 through the side AB of the block 
he adjusts his line of sight until the images of P1 and P2 appear one behind the other. He places two pins P3 and P4 between his eye and the block so that P3, P4 and the images of P1 and P2 seen through the block appear one behind the other. The positions of P3 and P4 are shown. Part I says draw a line joining the positions of P3 and P4 and continue the line until AB and label E the end of the line furthest from AB. So going back we join the points P3 and P4 and extend them until they meet at AB and draw beyond P4 to label this point at the end E. Part double I says measure the acute angle alpha between the line NL and the line CE. An acute angle is less than 90 degrees. So between NL and CE we use a protractor like this to measure the angle from the top to the line CE. So on my diagram this is approximately 49 degrees. Not all of you will get the same exact angle. So I write 49 degrees here. State one precaution that you would take in order to produce an accurate ray trace sheet. We can say use thin pins or we can say draw thin lines and make sure the pins are far apart as possible or look at the bases of the pins or make sure the pins are vertical. Now part E says the student moves the transparent block to a new position on the ray trace sheet as shown in figure 3.2. He places pins P1 and P2 on line DC as before. In the same positions used in BII, he observes the images of P1 and P2 through the curved side of the block, this time not from the flat side. He places pins P5 and P6 between his eye and the block so that P5 and P6 and the images of P1 and P2 appear one behind the other. He draws line CF, which is already drawn in this part of the diagram, through the positions of P5 and P6. We are required to measure the acute angle beta between the line AB and the line CF. So we need this angle here. So again, using a protractor, we place the center at C and we measure this angle. This is approximately 71 degrees. So this should be the same for all since it is already drawn, not drawn by the candidate. Part double I says calculate the angle theta between CF and the normal. So if between CF and AB was 71 degrees and we have the normal at 90 degrees, so we subtract 90 minus 71 to get this angle theta. That would give an answer of 19 degrees. Part F says a student suggests that the angle alpha should be equal to angle theta. Alpha was 49 degrees and this is 19 degrees. So the results do not support this theory. So we say no because the difference is outside the range of experimental error. The difference was too big to consider them the same. Question 4 says a student investigates the change in resistance of a lamp filament when the current in the lamp is increased. The following apparatus is available, a power supply, a low voltage filament lamp, and a meter, a voltmeter connecting wires. Other apparatus normally found in a school laboratory is also available. Plan an experiment to investigate the change in resistance of the lamp filament when the current in the lamp is increased. So the independent variable is the current. We need to change the current in order to see what happens to the resistance as a dependent variable. So the resistance R is given by the equation R equals V over I where V is a potential difference across the lamp and I is the current in the lamp. Draw a circuit diagram. You must draw a circuit diagram. Explain briefly how you investigate. Draw a table or tables with column headings. Explain how you use the readings to reach a conclusion. So first, in order to make the lamp work, we need a power supply and a switch to disconnect the current between readings to allow the wires to cool. We have the lamp, which is a circle with a large X inside. And in order to change the current, we need a variable resistor that is connected in series, not in parallel with the lamp. And we have an ammeter that reads the current in the circuit and the lamp. And the voltmeter to measure the potential difference must be connected across the lamp itself. Since we need to calculate the resistance of the lamp, not the whole circuit. So the voltmeter is only in parallel with the lamp. Now we start saying that we will set up the circuit as shown in the diagram. 
and as a safety for the circuit itself or accuracy for the circuit itself we set the resistance of the variable resistor to maximum just to make sure the current is, isn't too much at the start of the experiment then we switch on the current and read the voltage V and current I from the voltmeter and ammeter then we say that we will calculate the resistance of the lamp using R is equal to V over I now we finished the experiment all we need to do now is switch off the current to allow wires to cool and change the resistance of the variable resistor and now we repeat all steps until we have five sets of readings or we can say any number between five and ten sets of readings and now we draw the table so we measure the potential difference in volts we measured the current in amperes and we calculated the resistance in ohms so this is our table we only need the headings we do not need to enter any numbers or any readings in the table and we can say that we will plot a graph of I per ampere on the x-axis since this is the independent variable against R per ohms on the y-axis as the dependent variable then we can say uh, some controlled variables we can use the same voltage of power supply or we can say same lamp or same equipment so this was the end of the exam I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful to you keep practicing and I will see you in another video